Hi everyone, I'm Kai Palmer, and today I want to talk about how to learn a jazz tune to improvise over. So you just heard me play a little bit over the Tad Dameron tune, Lady Bird, that I'm working on uh, for myself and for my improv class right now. And the big question is, how do I learn a tune? What can I do to get better at improvising over the tune? How can I learn it better? So I have a few suggestions here. And I want to start out by saying the most important thing, obviously, is listening. You want to really know the tune in your head before you start working on it intellectually. You want to know what it sounds like. You want to know what it feels like. What, what kind of feeling does it inspire in you when you hear this tune? So there's some great versions of Lady Bird. There's the original Tad Dameron that has Fats Navarro on it. There's a Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers version. It has Hank Mobley and Kenny Dorham on it. There's a fantastic live version with Dexter Gordon playing in Europe in the early 60s. So my first suggestion is really check the tune out and listen to some of your favorite players playing the tune and then branch out a little bit. Listen to people who don't play your instrument. If you're a trumpet player, listen to Dexter Gordon. Uh, if you're a piano player, listen to Kenny Dorham. Figure out how you can get a slightly different perspective on the tune. But the main thing I want you to do is listen. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a written copy of the tune that we can work from if we don't feel like our ears are good enough to learn the tune by ear. So here's a lead sheet I made up uh, for Lady Bird here. And I'll just throw that up on the screen so you can see what I'm working from. And this is kind of a compilation of different versions I've heard. And it's the simplest version of the chord changes. Uh, it has this Tad Dameron turnaround at the end, but it doesn't have the 2-5 up a half step uh, in the key of A before you go to the key of A flat, which a lot of versions do. So I'm starting out with a little simpler version of the changes here. You can always add more complex versions later. I think the turnaround at the end is very important. So... I've got that here, and even then there's different ways you can play this turnaround. You notice I have that first chord in the Tad Dameron turnaround is a dominant seventh. A lot of people play a major seventh there. Some people alter uh, the turnaround by playing a dominant seventh, major seventh, dominant seventh, major seventh. Some people play all major sevenths. I like this approach here where you play a dominant seventh and then two major sevenths, so essentially you're going to a major key that's up a minor sixth from the from the original key of the tune but anyway start with a good a good copy uh, that you can work from if you don't feel confident just transcribing it yourself uh, if you do have a copy like the real book for instance check it against some recordings play the changes from the real book see if they seem right to you because you can probably tell that even if you don't feel confident transcribing the changes yourself. Then, of course, the first thing I'm going to work on is learning the melody. Now, don't skip this step. A lot of people don't really think about the melody. They want to get right to improvising over the tune. I understand it's more exciting to be creative and improvise, but the melody is so important, and getting the right style and feel on the melody is what's going to make you sound like a more experienced improviser before you ever start improvising. So think about listening to the way people play the melody. What do your favorite players do with vibrato, with phrasing, with rhythm? Really check it out. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the melody along with a play-along track. Uh, you can you can get tracks from Band in a Box. You can build your tracks. You can build your tracks from iRealBook, uh, iRealB, iRealB Pro. These are all good sources where you can build your own track. So I've got a track from Band in the Box here that I'm going to play along with that matches what I've got on my sheet. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to practice playing the melody. I'm just going to play a couple of choruses of the melody.
just like anything else, the key to really learning the melody here is going to be repetition. So go ahead and play that melody as many times as you need to to really internalize it to the point where you just know it. And you don't just have it memorized, but you really know it. It's very second nature and conversational. The next thing we're going to do is start working on learning the chord changes. And the most important part of the chord changes is going to be the root movement. So to learn the root movement, as a trumpet player, I just practice long tones along with my play along CD where I'm holding the notes of the roots for as long as the chord lasts. Now, if we're playing piano, we can play the roots and the melody at the same time. As a horn player, I'm going to separate that out and just practice long tones on the roots along with my play along. Don't skip this step. Once again, it's kind of boring, but it's really important. And the other thing this will help you do is hear the changes. When we're improvising, we're not counting bars to keep track of where we are. We're literally just experiencing the changes and we know when the next change is coming, even though we didn't count a certain number of beats or bars. So when I do that exercise, it sounds like this. So now I've practiced the root movement and heard the pacing of the chords, but I haven't really delved into the chord qualities. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the shells to the roots, the thirds and the sevenths, that really determine the sound quality of each chord. Now if I'm playing a chordal instrument like the piano, I could play the root and one of the shell notes in my left hand while I play the melody in my right hand. So I'll start with the root and the third. As a trumpet player, I don't have the option of playing two notes at once, so I'm going to do this in a melodic sense, where I'm going to play the third to the root in each bar that has a chord. So that exercise sounds like this. The next thing I want to do is to add the other shell note, the seventh of the chords, to my practice. If I was playing piano, I could simply add the seventh on top of the root as a voicing in my left hand, and then play the melody above that. I could also make a three note voicing with the root and both shells and play the melody on top of that. As a horn player, I'm going to play this pattern melodically, so where I'm, I'm playing both shells and the root. So I'll play third to root and seventh to root. Is my basic pattern to practice the root with both the shells. When I play that exercise,
exercise on trumpet sounds like this. The last thing I'm going to do is add the ninth to my practice pattern of root and shells. This is the way we would build a voicing if we were a piano player. We would start with the three note voicing of root and shells, and then the first note we would normally add would be the ninth to give it a little more color. So I'm going to do this in my practice melodically, and I'm going to play from the third down to the seventh, including the nine. So three, two, one, seven. Now you notice if we do this over a two, five, one pattern and we start on the third of the two chord, then start on the third of the five chord, start on the one or the third of the one chord we get a nice melodic line that's just a scale running down but we've included all the nice notes in the right places Once I can play these exercises comfortably along with a play along track without looking at my lead sheet, I'm ready to start soloing. And the first thing I'm going to do is practice soloing using only the major scales and any related modes or arpeggios. Once I feel comfortable improvising with the major scales and their related modes and chord arpeggios, I'm going to add a little bit of complexity by adding some passing tones. These are generally referred to as the bebop scales. So for my major chords, I'm going to add a passing tone between the fifth and the sixth note of the scale. So the lowered six is a passing tone on the major scale. On my mixolydian mode chords, the dominant seventh chords, I'm going to add the major 7th as a passing tone, and on my minor 7 Dorian chords, I'm going to add the major 3rd as a passing tone. This will give me a little more complexity, a little more movement to my lines, and is the next step for me after I practice using just the related major scales.
next variation I add to my solo practice is modal improvisation. In this example, I'm going to use a mode for each chord and stick strictly with the mode with no passing tones. So I'm going to use the Lydian mode over my major seven chords, the Dorian mode over my minor seven chords, my dominant sevenths, I'm either going to use the Lydian dominant scale or the fully altered scale, depending on whether it's a five going to one or not. And these are going to be coming from modes of the melodic minor scale. So now I'm going to stick with strictly modal improvising, quite different than the more bebop style I practice with the bebop scales and the passing tone. Now we're back to where I started, freely improvising using all these techniques together that we've been practicing separately. I hope this video has been helpful, and remember at the end of the day, we're just trying to play what we feel.